Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations in Horror. I am your host, Kevin L. Powers. I'm also the festival director and program director of Something Wicked Film Festival and Events. And welcome to our podcast today. Uh, today, <laughs> we're going to we're going to discuss a film that's a, a little bit near and dear to my heart. A little bit. And it's also one of those films that you can't help but enjoy whether it is an actually good film or not. Because what film out there isn't made better with the presence of Bruce Campbell? So today we are discussing the movie Evil Dead 2, which is one of my favorite films of all time, because I, I never get tired of this movie. When I was rewatching it before, I was laughing my ass off just as though I had seen it for the very first time. And to help me discuss this film is one of my favorite guest hosts, Sarah Panazzo. Oh, Sarah. hi. <laughs> we are going to be discussing this film, and I hope you enjoy today's podcast because it is uh, a special one because of how much fun it is. <laughs> So uh, we're going to get ready to jump into this, Panazzo. And uh, I, I have to know uh, whether or not you saw this film when it originally came out or if you saw it later in your young life. <laughs> and what was your impression of this movie? Well, seeing as how I was just a twinkle in my parents' eye when the movie first came out, uh, it was very interesting to view it the first time in college completely trashed. Um, I think we actually did a marathon of all three. So you didn't have a choice whether you were going to like it or not. It was one of those things that everybody was drinking. We had these horror movie nights. We did it with Paranormal Activity and all these other ones. And uh, that was just one of the nights that we were like, how have I never heard of this? How have I never seen this? <laughs> and it was just so much fun. Um, arguably, when I rewatched it last week or the week before, it wasn't that much fun because I was sitting by myself and I was like exhausted from work, but I was like, I still appreciate everything about this movie from the effects to the, uh, the comedic everything that is done in it. I mean, it's, it's a classic and it's a very well done classic. Which is very odd to say, uh, cause this is one of the reasons why it's so, uh, it is a diverse film because it's not one of those classic great movies that you always are talking about. Oh, Martin Scorsese did this amazing horror film called Evil Dead. No, no, no. This is an early film from the acclaimed director, Sam Raimi, and he has nothing but great fun doing this movie. And it all doesn't have to make sense because you are laughing your ass off, being scared and overjoyed with the antics that happened to Bruce Campbell. Now, uh, when I first saw this film, I actually saw it, I think a few, a year or two after it was released, I can't remember exactly, as a bootleg. Uh, a friend of mine had given me this movie uh, as a bootleg copy and said, Kevin, Kevin, you gotta watch this. This is the greatest horror movie ever. Uh, and so I watched it not having seen the first one. So I didn't know what the hell I was getting into. I just knew the movie was... VHS tape, everyone. A VHS tape <laughs> a label that said Evil Dead 2. And I watched it and I couldn't stop laughing and I became a huge fan. So much so that I had to go out and watch the first film and I was disappointed at the first film when I first saw it. Uh, <laughs> it can be a little disappointing if you see the Evil Dead first, Evil Dead 2 first, and then go yes, back. Yes, it can. It very much can, because like going through and watching it in a series, like back to back, I was very confused the first time I was like, didn't we just watch this? Or why is he back at this cabin if we know there's evil in it? Totally didn't make sense to me. But now that I've like looked into it, I've watched it numerous times, makes complete sense. And I'm so happy that they redid it the way that they did. I am too, and I had the same reaction when I saw it too. Uh, after seeing the, uh, the first, second one first, and then going back and watching the first one, I'm like, I kind of saw a lot of this in the other movie, and it's not funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I have learned to appreciate the original Evil Dead over the years, and they're both actually all three of them, actually all five of the movies in the Evil Dead franchise, I think, are actually excellent movies. Uh, but Evil Dead 2 yes. is the one I consider my all-time favorite. I've seen it the most, and it was the very first one I ever saw. Uh, plus, it introduced me to Bruce Campbell. I had no, I, no idea who the hell Bruce Campbell was when I first saw this movie, but I've learned to absolutely love Bruce Campbell and just about everything he does because of this movie. <laughs> yes, Bruce Campbell is a national treasure. I hate that I miss him every single time he's in town. 
Um, but he is just such a loving and wonderful person, especially to like fans and such. Like he's one of those nicest people you'll ever meet. And just I watched the uh the special that they did. It was called Swallowed Souls, the making of Evil Dead 2 was released in 2011. And watching all the antics of the behind the scenes footage they did of the test takes of going through the house and just all the crazy stuff they did on set and how much fun they had. I mean, Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi met when they were like 16 and in high school and they basically started this giant family of movie creators who all met in like college and then went on to do Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 and all these other projects after that. So it's really cool how childhood best friends could keep the goofiness and silliness up to do these movies. Like they kept joking during uh, Swallowed Souls that Bruce Campbell must have had like a girlfriend that he stole from Sam Raimi at some point because Sam Raimi kept like torturing him doing certain scenes. So that was one of the big jokes. And also how Ted Raimi is like just a punching bag for Sam Raimi for any character <laughs> crazy stuff he needs to do. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, over the years, I've kind of gotten the impression that Sam Raimi uh, uses a lot of his best friends as punching bags while being yes. very professional to everyone else. <laughs> well, apparently one of his favorite things growing up was the Three Stooges, which he's tried to put into each thing. And it shows through his comedy. I mean, like you've got the uh, the scene where Ash is like bouncing and the deer head starts like bouncing and singing and everything starts like laughing in unison. And it's like, this is very like Popeye or like early <laughs> cartoons humor. So it it truly shows in his comedy from it. But then as funny as it is, it can be equally as terrifying. Like I know the first time I watched Evil Dead 2, I was thoroughly creeped out by the dancing Barbie scene. <laughs> but I mean, like this, the prosthetics and stuff like that, like they're they're fantastic. I mean, yeah. everything is super gory and gross, and all of the stunts and everything are just so well done. Uh, yes, and they have stood the test of time. Even though there are some claymation yeah. effects in there, some of the stuff that he did in that movie is just simply amazing even now. When I rewatched it, I was like, wow, this is still holds up really well. And it's it's funny because there's certain scenes where like you can see like the pulleys and the rigs, and like these there's a part where I guess they like accidentally split the possessed Henrietta suit and so like when he's spinning when I say he it was Ted Raimi in the suit but uh when Henrietta's spinning around in the air you can see this giant hole in between her legs where the suit ripped but there's so much fun behind it and there's so many good things like the fact that they made a semi-practical uh chainsaw arm <laughs> it's really cool. And then just the weird camera stuff they did where they were like, we want to try this. And they did it. And they were like, that worked surprisingly well. Let's do it again. That's the that's that's the one of the things I really enjoy. You bring up something really, really uh phenomenal about the film is some of the creativity with the cinematography and some of the stuff that Sam Raimi and his crew did sometimes by, you know, by accident. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> Uh, by trial and error, I guess is the best way to, to, to put it, because he's uh, Ramey has talked about this numerous times on some of the stuff that he and uh, his crew created for both the first one and the second film. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really interesting because you look at like the special effects teams, whether it's the prosthetics or the actual effects themselves. And the crew is so big and popular now, like they are all masters of horror at this point. I mean, even the composer has done multiple horror movies at this point. Mm. So everybody who came out of this basically just, they knew what they wanted to do. They were like, well, we know we can kind of enter the film scene by doing horror movies, but we also love comedy. So let's do both. <laughs> and then like, they've made, such a name for themselves just from this one film that they've gone on to do so many other things <laughs> i agree i think this is this series now i believe may be the one series that will forever be on sam raimi and bruce campbell's resume and what most audiences will know them for sam raimi is also known for spider-man but to be, to the rest of us out there it is really the Evil Dead franchise, and they just keep cranking them out every few years. Not like a regular horror franchise, mind you. They're working on a new one now, but it's 
far removed from uh being like a normal franchise. They may do one every five, eight years, and not like one every other year, like something like Scream, which yeah, also or Paranormal Activity. But like that's what makes these movies so great, and they're so different in the same universe because you get the first one, which is more scary than funny. Yep. And the second one, which is more like funny than anything else. And you get some great one-liners from two and three, but then you've got the ultimate horror version of like pouring blood on the sets. <laughs> um, in, I think it was just called the evil dead again. Yeah. Um, and then the newest one, evil dead rise. One of my favorite horror films of the last few years. I mean, yeah. the kids in that movie are going places. They went places with those kids that, people did not think was acceptable yeah like you you're, you're not supposed to kill the kids in a movie especially a horror movie but i mean you look at like pet cemetery <laughs> and some of the older movies and you're like but that's what works <laughs> and i mean well, they're just creepy and they're funny and they're just oh so gory <laughs> yeah. yeah well i will agree there was a little bit more humor in evil dead rise than there was in evil dead the yes Rangers. Evil Dead remake is almost pretty much a uh, a, a straight horror. horror film, yeah. And which what do you think is better, the the straight horror film of like the the original Evil Dead or the more comedic horror like in Evil Dead Two? I think the fact that it's comedic, like Evil Dead Two, is what has made it stand the test of time. Because like mm. people know Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi from the first one, but the lines that everybody says like groovy <laughs> or like this is my boomstick, all from the comedic sides. <laughs> I mean, there's so many good one-liners. Some of Bruce Campbell's best acting is him attacking himself with his hand. I mean, it's an iconic scene. And then he cuts it off and replaces it with a chainsaw and then saws off the shotgun to make it a sawed-off shotgun with his chainsaw arm. Then goes back in time to fight evil. <laughs> I have to say that with each of the films in this brand or the uh, core films in this franchise they managed to change up each of the genres like we discussed with the first ones more or less the straight war yes. straightforward horror second one's got this horror comedy going on and of course the third one is a medieval uh a medieval it's... more comedy than it is fantasy than it is horror at all they just went straight for the comic the comedic the comedic aspects of the film mixing it with this medieval film Right, and that's not even including the TV show, Ash vs. Evil Dead. I mean, the series is so wide at this point, and then you get, like, the fact that uh, Army of Darkness was supposed to be the sequel, but the, uh, who was it, like, the pro one of the producers or whatever was like, no, let's kind of redo the first one and extend it a little bit because we want to kind of keep with that, and Sam Raimi didn't have the rights, so he had to reshoot essentially the whole movie for the second one. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's why we have that instead of using like cuts or whatever from the first movie you get a brand new movie with just two characters yeah uh, unfortunately but, uh if you're if you're listening to this and you don't realize the rights issues with the evil that is all kind of screwed up <laughs> and i only know of this because i've read the army of darkness comic books and the evil dead comic books which are completely separate because the rights are held by different companies which is so crazy to me uh if anyone reads uh the four color comic books the evil uh, army of darkness franchise has been going on probably since the original movie ended <laughs> uh but the evil evil dead comics have not gone on as much but they are completely separate because the rights are all over the place so we well, get and it's Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Benazel. Uh, I was going to say it's crazy that with the rights and everything, too, because, like, this second one was um, made by the Rosebud Releasing Corporation, which is not a real thing. And that was the only film released by them um, because of the severe X rating. They didn't want, nobody wanted to dirty their name with this X rated movie. And the fact that it became X-rated and it was unrated, released in theaters, made it so great. But it also explains like all the different blood colors throughout the film. <laughs> like they didn't, they didn't want it to be X-rated, so they were like, "Well, if we change the color of the blood, that it it'll it'll be different." They're not going to care, and they're like, "No, it's still an X rating." So they were just like, "You know what? We're gonna." But like the people releasing the NPAA was like, "It's not the same movie if like we cut out the things that make it." 
what it is Mm -hmm. and make it an R-rated movie. So just say we did not rate it and review it and it's an unrated film. Yeah. And that's why we've got this wonderful, gory, (laughs) hysterical movie that has inspired so many other things. I mean, this the spin-offs from this alone are insane. They are, and I'm, I, and I have to agree with you on this. I'm really glad that at the time this was released, it was released unrated. There wasn't many movies being released unrated. Uh, the only, the other big one would be, of course, George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, which was released unrated. But that was something that didn't happen a lot because theaters were afraid of releasing them, uh, or they became afraid to release them. So I think a, a couple of years right after these movies were released, or we would, we wouldn't have these two movies yeah. if not for that. I mean, imagine if they had cut it down to get an R rating. Oh my yeah, god! I I don't know. It would definitely wouldn't be the same thing that it is now, and I don't think they would have gotten a third one. Oh, that's it. That's an interesting point. You're probably right about that. Huh. Yeah, and I mean, there's so much heart and everything else that went into this. It's just kind of insane. I mean, and they had so many like, not necessarily backers, but they had so many people on the sidelines cheering them on. Like Stephen King was. <laughs> one of the main people who got this movie filmed because I guess it was during the time he had like his six or seven movies coming out like year after year after year. And he was like, no, I saw the first one and I loved it. And um, I need his uh, producer was Dino De Laurentiis. Mm -hmm. He was working with him on Maximum Overdrive. And he was like, no, I need you to fund this film. And Dina was like, okay, I'll give him a shot. And that's what he did. And that's when they created the the fake company to release the film and everything. But like Stephen <laughs> King was like adamant about this. Like, no, give these people the chance. They know what they're doing. Um, and I mean, you look at what this has done. Like I said, it's created so many things. There's even a, um, the Elvis Dead, which is a UK stage show where it's retold by Elvis. <laughs> which I think is even funnier when you look at the fact that Bruce Campbell then was in a movie called Bubba Hotep as a guy who thinks he's Elvis or maybe he is Elvis. That's another one of my favorite Bruce Campbell movies because he does it so well. <laughs> which brings me up. I would have to definitely put that one on one of our lists to actually watch Bubba Hotep because that was not on our list. <laughs> yeah, that one's got one of the best name drops of all time. And like I said, Bruce Campbell as Elvis is just... It's a beautiful thing. I mean, Bruce Campbell in general is a beautiful, wonderful character. And watching him do all these like facial expressions and him with the possessed face and all of the different uh, makeup things that they did to show it is just phenomenal. So we're gonna, we, let's talk a little about, about Bruce Campbell because uh, I do think that my enjoyment of this entire franchise is mostly because of Bruce Campbell. And uh, I don't think I would have rewatched him as much as I have uh, lately if it hadn't been for Ash versus the the Evil Dead. Right? Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm getting a little confused in my brain. I'm thinking of Ash versus Army of Darkness, and that's the title of the third movie. Uh, (laughs) um, But the thing is, I had put these movies to the side for a very long time i hadn't watched them in a while until the show came out which i guess has been it's been off the air for what three four years now yeah or uh, 2018 so six years what? that does not seem like it's been off the air since for six years oh my god well it's because it's made the comeback every time the new evil dead movies come out everybody gets a resurgence in the tv show and they start re-releasing it again and it's just a testament to how well done these series are because it's gaining new fans with all these new movies that people uh, go back and rewatch all this stuff. It and is, uh, mm. it's just great. I love it. It is. And it uh, has many years passed in between Army of Darkness and Ash vs. Evil Dead. Bruce Campbell did not seem to miss a beat at all. He was, no. <laughs> he was I mean, you're essentially he really was. You're essentially watching a one-man show at certain points. I mean, he's losing his mind in the house in the second one, and then he's leading a medieval army in the third one. I mean, what kind of range are you expecting from a man? Oh, my God. Now I'm going to have to go back and rewatch the show again. I, hadn't, I haven't seen it in, I guess, six years. Oh, my God. It does not seem yeah. like that long. Uh, I'll have to go back and rewatch the show again. And thankfully, it's a short show. It just, you know, 
yeah and they're fun they're short episodes and it went it was right around that time that everybody started doing like some kind of demon comedy show because i think it was like stan versus evil also came out around that same time and there was a few others (laughs) uh the thing is horror on television has had a resurgence uh of late uh probably around this time that ash versus uh evil dead start start airing because of course you had the exorcist show you have yeah. american horror story i guess is around the same time since it's been six years and there we no, go american and- horror story was much earlier than that i think right. that did a, a great resurgence um but then you've got like um midnight mass and haunting of hill mm-hmm. house and stuff like that on netflix that have really resurged and then like you get the screen tv show everybody's doing oh, yeah. spin-offs now with the uh halloween tv show we're going to get a jason tv show at some point from i think hbo so like we're getting so many different tv shows of stuff being revamped oh. and just extended on extended yes <laughs> the only one i i currently watch is the chucky show <laughs> oh, it's, it's so much fun. And I, I love the fact that uh, Brad Dorf comes back. I love the fact that they brought back just about everybody. <laughs> oh, I know. Everybody who's been in the franchise seems to have come back for the television show. That's a well, testament to the love of that one. <laughs> it really is. And it's so much fun. Like, it's equally as fun. Like, it's a lot more creepy because it's a tiny little doll um, versus a bunch of, like, demonic prosthetics and, like, <laughs> disgustingness. But there's so much fun watching Chucky in general. I mean, they've they've really played into it with the TV show too. They they have they have. Uh, but in regards to Evil Dead, they, I want your opinion. What do you think? Why do you think people gravitate towards this film? Why do you think it's uh it's has such a profound um, influence on generations? I won't say just one generation because people keep rewatching and re uh reevaluating this film generation after generation. And continue to say, this is the, this is one of the best of the franchise. This is one of the best horror movies out there. Yeah, I think it's because, like, especially with this one, it was one of the first horror comedies. Like, you look at this versus some of the others, and it's like, this one was, like, truly profound. To the point that, like, it becomes slapstick humor, and then it turns around and slaps you in the face with horror. Um but it was so well done. It was so lovingly done with everything it has. Like I said, the prosthetics, the CGI. CGI is a little dated, but for the time, I mean, the stuff that they were doing with like puppets and everything else, the suits, the makeup, it's all so well done for the time. I mean, you get like big people like uh, Nicotero out of this and like Kurtzman. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, just so many others that have then gone on to do so much bigger and better things. And this was their stepping stone. And you can truly see this, even for Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, how this was their stepping stone to greatness. It shows what was at the heart of their creativity. And they were able to build on that and do the big things that they wanted to do. (laughs) So, like I said, at the time horror comedy one of the firsts and it's it's definitely coming back over and over again yeah so hopefully they keep it where it's every couple of years instead of every year we get a new one uh yes i agree with that uh i it could because i think that with the time in between each film they allow the filmmaker whichever one they bring in to create mm-hmm. a story that is actually compelling and interesting, not only for the old school horror fans like myself, but also for the younger generations who can appreciate a film that has something going for it more than just the gore. Uh, like Evil Dead Rise had that had familial themes in it. It had gore in it. It had comedy in it. It was truly uh, a step above for a, a, what I would consider a horror reboot, as everyone likes to call them nowadays. Yeah, and that the comedy isn't just period-based either. It's almost timeless because, like, yeah, you've got the whole, like, if you didn't know Popeye when you were younger and you couldn't put the cartoon, like, bounciness, like I was talking about earlier together, like, a farewell to arms drops down over the bucket that has his hand in it. And it's like, okay, you know that's a famous book. You might not know what the book is about, but that's a 
that's so funny. A farewell to arms as he cut off his hand. And then, like, you get so many other things that, like, you're just cheering for these funny things to happen. Like, the newest one, Evil Dead Rise, where uh, <laughs> she, like, spits out somebody's eyeball and it launches in across the hallway into somebody's throat. And you're just cheering for it to happen. And you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. But it's it's all stuff that like it doesn't have to make sense from a per- certain perspective it's it's funny to be funny yeah and it it really works yeah yeah i agree i agree <laughs> uh so uh <laughs> um now that we've discussed a lot about uh the evil dead is there anything in particular because i'm I, i'm one of those guys those, those those people who have seen it a lot of times and so I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, I've been giving a lot away with this movie because it's one of my favorite movies. Uh, is there a moment in the in this movie that you just think is far and beyond something that people have to know about, have to see this movie for if they haven't seen it before? I mean, just Bruce Campbell's entire possessed hand scene. It is iconic. I mean, they be they made the movie Idle Hands just because of it with <laughs> Seth Green. I mean, they reference it over time and time again they'll reference this movie but that is one of the most famous horror scenes of all time not for even really being scary but it is so well done to the point that he's smashing plates over his own head (laughs) like for fun (laughs) but it's it's just an iconic scene for any horror fan it, it is. Uh, so I'm gonna go with uh, I that I was I was gonna say that one myself. That's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. But so is the one we've also mentioned earlier, which is the scene in which the moose head comes alive and he's just laughing his ass off. Yes. Until uh, the actual owners of the kit uh, the cabin arrive, and he, of course he almost shoots. He shoots through the door and almost hits one of the people. Yeah. I love that scene as well. But what really gets me is the final scene in the movie. Uh, when Bruce Campbell is being sucked through the vortex, and he says, how do you stop this thing? And of course, he goes flying through the vortex and lands in medieval times. Uh, (laughs) And he's like, what is going on? And they're like, oh my god, he's one of the evil ones. He's one of the deadites. And then the weird winged decrepit thing flies and it it almost looks like a a mel brooks character's face (laughs) flying into scene and he just takes out his shotgun and just shoots it and it explodes and everyone's like he's our savior he's done it (laughs) uh so the the, you know you didn't have this experience like i did because you watched all three of them at the same time yeah i watched the second one uh, I watched it when it more or less came out, maybe a year, maybe two years after it came out. And for the for the life of me, I was one of those kids who thought that they just made uh, sequels automatically if they didn't end the film uh, like at, at, a, at a reasonable end. So for years, I was waiting for for the third part of the Evil Dead to come out. I was like, Oh my God, when is that going to be coming out? I need to see it now. No one ever told me that it may never come out. So uh, when the movie actually came out, I, I I had to go see it. I had to go see Army of Darkness when it came out. I had been waiting years for this fucking sequel to finally see the light of day. And of course, because I was it was rated R, I had to take my father had to take me. I shocked the fuck out of my father. He watched the first five, ten minutes of this movie, not knowing what the hell he had gotten into, and walked out and just gave me this look. What the heck did I pay money for? And walked out the theater. <laughs> I was there as a kid just watching it. I was like, oh, this is going to be the greatest movie ever. My dad walked out, and this was before cell phone, so he can't go out there and play on the cell phone. So I don't know what he was doing outside the theater. He's just probably smoking. He's just chilling out in the theater, waiting for me to be done an hour and a half later. <laughs> so did he ever go back and watch it with you? Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> he was out there waiting for me when the movie was done. You know, I mean, in general, has he ever gone back and watched it and been like, oh, this no. is what that movie's about? No, he's never. He, my, so my 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 father, uh, bless his heart, because he's passed away, always took me to whatever movies I wanted to watch. Always. He, without, without a doubt, I saw so many fucking horror movies when I was a kid. I, I probably never should have seen. I was too young. Um, but that's the only one that he actually walked out on and never came back. 
I like, like literally he he didn't even walk out when he took me and my friend to go see uh what was that uh Jason goes to hell. He actually oh sat in the for that one, but he walked out on Army of Darkness because he was like, What the hell is this that I'm watching? He at least knew who Jason Voorhees was, but that one, nah, he walked out. I'll I'll never forget that experience. That's the first time I ever watched my dad walk out of a movie was Army of Darkness. This movie I had been dying. <laughs> years to see that's fantastic <laughs> so that's my story about uh, evil dead slash army of darkness slash the evil dead franchise <laughs> uh any final thoughts for you since i just told my whole story <laughs> um i have a fun fact which is hilarious in hindsight um okay. the woods that they shot at was nearby to this giant white farmhouse that a few years later was used in Spielberg's The Color Purple. It was kind of like the backyard. So they just had this decrepit, like, cabin in the back that they decided to shoot a horror movie and then, you know, made, like, one of the most popular movies of that, like, decade <laughs> right next door. Um, and all of the inside sets for the house were shot in a junior high down the street <laughs> oh i did not know that that's they took over like the gymnasium and they just built the inside of the house sets and it's just really surreal to think of it that way especially like with how rainy and uh with how both of them met each other just being like high school early mid or late middle school like it it's just so funny was it their high school that they shot this in? I don't believe so, because I believe it was oh. all in uh, Wadesboro, North Carolina, and they grew up in Michigan. Oh, gotcha. I know they shot some of it in Michigan. I'm just not sure exactly how much. Hmm. Okay. Well, interesting. <laughs> Something for maybe another episode for when we discuss the original Evil Dead or, heaven forbid, Army of Darkness. Uh -huh. And with that, I want to thank my guest, Sarah Bonazza, for joining me on this uh, episode of Conversations in Horror. <laughs> yes, thank you, Kevin. Uh, please, for all of you out there, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, discussion. Also, seek out some of our other episodes. We've uh, discussed a lot of great horror films um, in the past, and we have a lot of stuff coming up for you. Please remember to subscribe to us, because without your continued support, we cannot continue to do these amazing episodes of discussing the craziest horror films out there for you. Uh, <laughs> with that, I want to thank you for joining us, and have a good day. Conversations in Horror is a Broken Lighthouse Pictures production produced by Kevin L. Powers, executive produced by Kelly A. Inoka, and originally filmed via Zoom technology. Conversations in Horror is hosted by Kevin L. Powers and co-hosted by various horror film lovers and filmmakers. To learn more about Mr. Powers, please make sure to check out his Patreon page and other social media platforms. Conversations in Horror is copyright 2024, Broken Lighthouse Pictures production.